So that other part is what does it take to participate? Who can participate in this kind of stuff? And one is there is a there's such like an entry fee to being able to participate because it's not cheap to be able to process, you know, 10 million tweets per second. It takes a certain amount of uh, IT architecture. And um, this is a proposal from uh, Teradata that I was looking at, which Teradata is probably one of the premier, probably two, I would say, Teradata and Oracle. Um, Teradata is really one of the premier places that can process this amount of information. But it's a whole vocabulary. You're talking about what they call Hadoop clusters. In a Teradata, this is called massive parallel processing inside a Aster, which is an analytical processing engine, to be able to really use this information. Uh, Oracle has its equivalent, too. Um, but you're asking, really, a computer to do what? You want to process your ERP data. You want to process all your supply chain data. You want to do images, and eventually we'll do video, and audio, <coughs> um, text mining, uh, social media, mining, all that information needs to be processed through some sort of engine. And there's a, there's a cost to it. Well, what's all the input? I mean, where is it getting the data? From the web. Everywhere. From out there. Everywhere. Mm -hmm. From your ERP systems. They're just collections of data. So you want to pull that data. There's this idea of you want to have one source of truth. So you want to pull all that information into like a giant data warehouse, enterprise-wide data warehouse, to be able to extract this information to make it usable for your, your company. You used to have to spend a lot of time cleaning the data, so yes. it would be useful. Who's cleaning all this data? Yeah, so there's a whole other area called data governance. Uh -huh. So these are people that make sure the data is clean, the data is identified, that there's some sort of structure to that data so that you can mine it. I and mean, that's a whole that's a whole field in itself. Mm -hmm. wow. And then there is a learning. Uh, yeah. I mean, you can see all the different words, and I know mm -hmm. I talk about a lot of them at work. You know, what is MySQL, OpenStack, like I said, uh, Hadoop, Cognos, Tableau. You know, it's it's a field in itself, and and, and it takes some sort of knowledge to gain this kind of expertise. So that is why, um, well, I was going to show you, but uh, the kind of expertise that you tend to find this is, is what they call a data scientist. And a data scientist, I was just looking at the uh, uh, career paths in the newspaper, so New York Times said, a data scientist, the sexiest job of the 21st century, um, New York Times said 190,000 projected shortage in data scientists by 2018. 10 hard to fill jobs. Who's Allen, data scientist? It's, it's an up and coming field. And the issue is um, oh, sorry, I changed the format of the, maybe it's even more artistic. <laughs> but I was looking at universities in the area that teach uh, data scientists. And there are quite a few. I mean, or Arizona State probably had the best supply chain program, but they went. They're also extremely good at business analytics. There's MIT, Drexel, NYU, Rutgers, and they're found in all different schools. So some are found in like MBA schools. Some are found in the computer science department. Um, and many of these are brand new. <coughs> I mean, sort of like Northwestern. Um, People that are graduating from that program are just graduating. And the first class probably graduated like last semester or something. So this is a brand new area. And I think a lot of colleges are starting to pick up that this is a really important area that we need to uh, educate our, our, our students. And as a person trying to hire this in this area, it is hard. Everybody wants them. And especially in New Jersey, because I'm competing against Manhattan, which usually has a higher salary structure, and against the pharmaceuticals. Because they're all trying to hire these types of people. And just sort of lastly, I just want to show that um, when this company um, asked 
you know, forty six percent of the companies listed inadequate staffing are still in as a top barrier for implementing big data and analytics. It's really true. I think there is a demand and will continue to be a demand for this kind of expertise. And I think to me, when you combine it with supply chain, which is a field in itself, it makes supply chain and data analytics a really, really powerful career and can make a company you know, really stronger. Um, and then, it, yeah, I think it's for uh, basically do post your job. Um, and that's pretty much it. Do you have questions or? Yeah, yes. Ben. So, in kind of the sense of analytics, how do you measure if your analytics are effective or not? Well, really, I mean, we have the, to me, the best testing ground there is, which is our supply chain. So the question is, if you develop something, you've got to have to, you have to test it. So your algorithm, whatever it is, is it working for you, right? Mm -hmm. And you know, I can launch an optimization program that optimizes my supply chain for inventory. Did it? Did the inventory actually go down? And then, are my customers being satisfied at you know ninety five percent or greater? Is it working? And that's all you want. So you can do. There's a lot of algorithms you can use for forecasting. Uh, and not the ones that are standard that come with all like the standard packages. You can create your own and see how well they can perform. It's very measurable. We have the best testing ground there is. <clears throat> so, uh, uh, just a comment about you know what she brought up uh, about the data cleansing, right? How do you make sure data is clean? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I guess in my mind. Um, like what creates data is, uh, what creates internal data is business processes, right? And uh, I guess it's, at this point, it is very important to you know, get those uh, right in terms of governance, like you brought up governance, right? Yeah. So that the data created is not uh, incorrect or, uh, you know, it has, you know, inconsistencies and that, right? So I guess, you know, like, I guess governance is, one of the biggest things to, you know, arrest that, you know, bad data being created right from the root. Right, absolutely. So it is about business process. You have to look at your business process, just like we look at supply chain process. Make sure that when the data actually enters the, the system, it's clean to begin with. And that's hard to do. And I, I remember when I was just looking for, like, names of companies, for example. AT&T. How many ways can you spell AT&T? 16. <laughs> American Telephone and Telegraph. A dot, T dot, you know, T dot. AT and, A -N -D -T, or and as an ampersand, T, you know, T. It's like, it's a zillion ways. And that <clears throat> corrupts your data. Like, yeah, because the prime example is like you go through your ship to data, ship to customer data, so you have uh, five customers, but it's the same person. Right, you have Maybe one sold to five ship to. Yes. yes. Yeah. It happens all the time. Yeah. But, but it's really, I was talking to a company, um, it was an Israeli company. They were trying to, so Israel has like, it has a couple major hospitals. So what it wanted to do is said, I can make medical records or your health care better if I can have the hospital where you're born, where you're seen as a kid, when you're seen when you're grown up, and just combine that data so that we have an entire medical history from the time you were born. Here, here. Every time I go to a new doctor, they want me to write out this paper. Mm -hmm. yeah. All of my medical history. Yeah. Right. Now, last I checked, it hasn't changed. Yep. I keep it as a file. Yeah. yeah. But can you imagine that problem? You're trying to take a person's name and say you have a person's name and address, and that changes over time. You, are, you didn't get born and grew up in the same place, and some people change their last names. So how do you then do this matching and make sure that all those medical records are the same and the same? 
And that's, mm -hmm. that's data integrity, too. Data, but, uh, data birth is one way. Yeah, but I bet there are, you know. Yeah, but think about somebody named John Smith. Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> but that's the, I know that's, John Smith. I know. That's, <laughs> right. that's the problem with data. <laughs> what, what, what type of yeah. initial investment or company size are you looking at that, that can even get started with this type of thing? Pretty large. I, I would say larger businesses because. I mean, a lot of times when I talk, it is about sort of big data, but I don't even know what big data is. You know, big data is whatever. We, we, I think supply chain has been working with big data for years. Yep. Um, the idea is that you need you need infrastructure to be able to do this kind of work. Mm -hmm. and, a, and a lot of smaller companies don't have it unless they're consulting to a bigger company. It tends to be big bigger companies. But I was looking at uh, like uh, this one company, Princeton Consulting, down in uh, Princeton. But they really uh, do consulting for all the financial. So they do a lot of this work for um, for the financial companies. And we had there's like independent companies who can like, you know you can buy this information from the yeah. process. Yeah. Right. So you can buy data. So I, I don't know if Capital One sells their data, but you can imagine they can they can make that a uh, profit center. You check the consent form, right? Yes, right. And they can check the information, but it's expensive too. But then you have to have the infrastructure to be able to process that, and the knowledge how to do that. You know, you needed like statistics and other analytical skills to be able to make something make sense of this, all this information. So what are the skill sets required besides statistics? So it's an analytical, I don't, it doesn't matter if it's statistics, but some sort of analytical background. I think they need to have some sort of sort of like information systems, computer science, and a field like supply chain. Right. Yeah. And that's, that's the combination. I would throw in a fourth one, which I think is really important, which is a soft skill. Meaning you need to deal with other people and basically work with them because you're going to work with a partner, whether it's the forward supply chain or the reverse supply chain or service supply chain. You're going to work with people to then help them with their information. So how do you find this? That's one of my challenge. How do you find those people? It's hard. It's only thing people really would want to do this. Why? Practitioner. Would want to do this. Yeah. yeah. Actually, I know because this, all these technology has been around for quite some time, mm -hmm. as well as the data. Yeah. And the data's been sitting there, <clears throat> but people just don't want to deal with uh, looking at data, analyzing data, cleaning data, all these kinds of things. Actually, you know, there's a lot of people that are interested. I think they, they tend to be um, analytical by nature. They, because I think now we have computers that can actually process this information much better, and it makes it a lot more fun and easier to do this. But maybe the supply chain practitioner might, might want to see some benefits. So what would be the benefits for doing this? Well, I mean, for me, it's like for example, it's optimization of my supply chain, and I want to optimize it at the store. I mean, I have thousands of stores. I want to be able to do not have a store manager try to figure out how much she should buy. I want to be able to, at my in the headquarters location, be able to do this across my entire supply chain. Um, that's a that's a major benefit. Um, I guess uh, you know for companies, I think uh, it's a pressure uh, on those companies to differentiate themselves. Right? Like I was with BASF as well. So at one point. You know, it was good enough to create a bunch of chemicals and sell it, right? But then, you know, I guess as uh, as business evolves, markets evolve, it is more and more important to get closer to the customer, study their habits, bring it back, and, you know, uh, use that to differentiate yourself. Yeah. I mean, there's a whole field of 